Hey guys, this is Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back and all that good stuff. We're going to roll into a photo today and boom, here's the photo. Now, uh, I'm going to do another Aurora HDR video. I've been doing a few of those lately. I'm having a lot of fun and um, truth is I got so busy with Luminar that I just didn't have a lot of time to dedicate to Aurora, but I use Aurora a lot. I love HDR and you can get some great stuff out of it. So I'm going to keep doing both and try to bounce back and forth a bit, but I probably got a couple more HDR videos I'll do. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is a three exposure bracket. Um, there's the dark, the medium, and the light. And this is the Mermaid End in uh, East Sussex, England, uh, a little town called Rye. Uh, I was back in London uh, back in January, I guess it was. And I was with some friends and they said, hey, we're gonna go down to the coast and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I ended up here. And uh, you know, as you can see in the dark exposure, the sky is pretty decent. It had a nice little sunset, but um, that's the challenge with not shooting HDR is that if you expose for the foreground, you lose the sky. If you expose for the sky, you lose the foreground. So um, I shoot brackets so I can get all three and that's my final result in Aurora. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch into that and show you how I got it. And um, here we go. So I've got a bunch of layers here and I'm gonna kind of run through this as quick as I can without feeling like I'm just kind of just, you know, hammering it. Um, so. Uh, first things first, this is your base HDR, and as you can see, there's uh, the medium exposure. Um, the sky actually came through pretty well, and, and I was really happy about that because um, sometimes you have to go back and sort of get the sky from another exposure, which you can do. I, I showed that in a previous video, but you can add a new layer. You can click on plus, and you can add new HDR bracket layer, and then you just go pick whichever one it would be. In this case, you'd probably pick the negative five. These were three exposures, negative five, negative three, and negative one, as you can see. Um, but if you wanted to put in a better sky that's not blown out, I would just go get the darker one and then you can just mask it in. I didn't have to do that because it actually came through really nicely, I think, in the base HDR. So I was happy with that. Um, I did a couple of minor things here uh, with the HDR basic and a little bit of color work as well. Um, and as you can see, um, let me show you what I did in color. I bumped up the saturation, the vibrance, and the color contrast. So I'm really starting to get some life, but um, you can see the walls are getting blue. And let me go back to the original. The walls are white, so we're gonna fix that. You can probably see I've named my layers here. I've got Fix the Blues coming up real soon. Um, and then I added a little image radiance, and this is just the base layer. It, um, I sort of, um, I'll often start out with an HDR just kind of for lack of a better word, feeling my way around. And so I used these three filters and said, you know, I kind of like that. Um, here's the original, um, or, or I should say the, uh, the center exposure from the bracket set. And here's where I am now. So apart from needing to fix the blues on the white walls, I, I'm kind of liking where I am. Um, now, this is me, so I just kind of keep going and do more and more because I like the big, bold colors and stuff. But, you know, the point is, you don't have to do a whole lot to get a, a, a pretty nice looking image out of Aurora uh, with nice colors. And so that's where I was, but um, I went ahead and stuck a preset on there because I really wanted to kind of give this thing some life. And so I went and got a preset. So this next layer, and I'm not gonna go through all these filters. Let me just show you. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in here. This is one of my presets. Uh, it's in my Road Tripper pack. It's called Loving That Light, which is this one here. Um, I sell Road Tripper on my blog for 10 bucks. If you're interested, if not, that's cool too. But it was just a single, you know, click and boom, I got a whole lot of color. So let me turn this layer off again. Uh, there's the before. Looks nice. It's balanced. It looks pretty nice. A little bit blue on the walls, but I think otherwise the color's looking pretty good. And then now I added this um, um, this uh, this preset. I can't remember what it's called. And it's really popping. But of course, the blue is just crazy out of control on the building. And so I got to go fix that. So I added another adjustment layer. And all you do to fix things like that in Aurora is you just make the adjustments that you wanna make, which in this case, I went into HDR Basic and I bumped up the whites quite a bit to brighten the whites. Uh, and then I went into color and I just took the saturation down significantly, negative 87. And then all I did is I just grabbed the brush on this layer. So you just go brush, click on that. And I'm just gonna show you what I masked in. It was a lot of little bits here and there. So all the white walls, um, you know, over here by the doorway, uh, these walls, down here and then down across, uh, literally across the village uh, or the street, I guess. It's Mermaid Street, I believe, in Rye. It's a beautiful town, really just gorgeous. I love these kind of things. I, I must have been English in another life or something, but I love this kind of stuff. Um, but bottom line, all that blue is crazy. So let me hit done. 
Um, and let me show you one more time the before. So you can see all the blue in the walls is off the charts, but also over here, if you're watching my mouse, and then this building's really picking up a lot of pink, as is this building, kind of a pinkish purple. And so that's why I didn't choose HSL and just reduce blue. I chose saturation, which would take all the colors down, and then I masked it in where I wanted it. So that allowed me to fix all these um, and increase the white. So which is what I did in HDR Basic, as you recall, I bumped up the whites. And so I knew all that stuff was supposed to be white, so I got it back to looking normal. And, and really at this point, uh, you know, theoretically, um, probably most people would say, hey, I'm done with the photo, it looks great. Um, now I see some splotchy stuff in the sky. I don't know if you can tell in the video. It's because I'm using JPEGs, and so sometimes they'll get a little splotchy, but that's gonna go away in a minute anyway. Uh, and in fact, it's gonna go away now. I'm gonna jump into my next layer, which I named Sky. And so uh, in this case, let me just turn that on. If you'll just look at the sky, it just got smoother and a little bit darker. And so what I did is, uh, the first thing I did is smooth it out, and that's HDR structure. And I went negative 100. I went all the way to the left with structure. And I've talked about this a lot, so forgive me if you've heard me say this uh, a number of times, but um, structures to the right is great for crunching up that detail. But if you go to the left, it softens it up. It makes it real kind of dreamy. And in fact, I'll use that instead of noise reduction a lot of the time, just to create that smooth kind of look, especially if it's not really noisy. It's it's technically not noise. It's just kind of a little bit of gunk in the sky. Plus it's a JPEG and I'm kind of pushing the pixels pretty hard. Um, uh, and then I boosted it. So amount to the left and boost to the right. Um, and it really smoothed out the sky um, and then in HDR Basic, all I did is I dropped the exposure a little bit, and then I, I went and painted it into the sky. So I'll show you that mask, and that is right there. So you can see I just kind of painted around the edges and covered in the sky. And so what happened is, I'm gonna hit, click done again. So what happened is the drop in exposure, as well as the uh, negative structure, are impacting just the sky because I, I chose to mask in that layer. And if you're not familiar with Luminar and Aurora, that's the key difference. Uh, one of the key differences between them is that anytime you do masking in Aurora, this is Aurora 2018. I don't know what's gonna happen in 2019, but in Aurora 2018, all the masking takes place on a layer basis. And so any masking is gonna apply to that entire layer. Whereas in Luminar, I can take all these filters on a single layer and mask them in individually. It's called filter masking. So that's one of the key differences between Luminar and Aurora is that Luminar actually has filter masking. So you don't often need to stack a lot of layers. You can if you want to, but usually in Aurora, uh, in Luminar, Alora, I'm making it up now. Um, usually in Luminar, I'm on a single layer because I can. I don't need to stack it unless I'm doing something kind of crazy like replacing a sky or adding a texture or whatever. So that's an aside. Okay, so there we are. And uh, to show you the before, uh, which is the center exposure, there's that and the left and right. I mean, you can see that I did not replace the sky. You, you've seen this, right? Um, you're watching the video. That is not a new sky, but you can see even the negative three exposure of the sky was just pretty much blown out. I mean, it's kind of a mess, to be honest. Um, using the same sky, just, uh, you know, uh, color bump and uh, with the preset and my first layer, as well as the negative structure and the decrease in exposure, just allowed me to darken that area and really pop up the color. So uh, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, I'm almost done, so I have a new layer called Almost Done because I'm real original. Um, let me turn that on. Um, and this is, I just went in and I just dropped the exposure across the entire photo and I added a slight vignette. And so to me, this was just a little touch up, just a last little kind of oomph, a last little kick. I don't know, you know, a little, I don't know, je ne sais quoi, right? Just a little something. Uh, and let me show you again. So if you look at the edges, right, because I added a vignette, um, the, it's just bright around the entire photo. And while I want the, uh, the eye of the viewer to look at the Mermaid Inn, but also to look at that street as it kind of goes down and curves, I don't want to like oversell that. So I think the vignette helps uh, because it really does obviously center uh, the attention on the center of the photo. Um, and uh, just the, the drop in exposure, the slight drop in exposure I think helps. Also with vignette, I believe, let me just double check. Yeah, inner brightness I bumped up to 85. So I, I really just move that up a lot. Let me show you the before vignette. Uh, see, it looks almost kind of dark, and partly is because in this filter, the basic filter on this layer, I dropped the exposure of the photo. Uh, but then with the vignette, I came in, I darkened the edges, and I really brightened the center, and I get that. So um, it may or may not be your look, and that's okay. It's just a fun thing to do, and if you want to wear that with vignette, by all means, 
um, use the uh, the inner brightness. And also you can place the center. So you can just come over here and say, I want the center to be there. And then it moves, right? Now I don't want it to, so I'm gonna go back and say center, pretty much in the center of the photo. I think actually maybe a little bit closer to that door. Um, something about like that I think looks really nice, but you can move it around and customize it, which is wonderful, I think. So, um, and that was it. And then I was, I was actually done. And I said, I'm done, I'm shipping it, we're, we're done. Um, and then I said, well, you know what, I'm not really done because I found one little thing I don't like, and you may have already noticed, and that is when I took down the blues on all the white walls, I didn't take down the blues on the windows. So um, I would expect if the sky is kind of blue and darker that the blue is gonna get picked up some in the window, like these top two, but also the frame around these windows is just too blue. It doesn't really look right. And so I went in and that was fix more blues. And so I just went in and let me turn that layer on. Uh, let's see, I don't know. I don't know if I hit it or not. Uh, apparently I didn't. There we go. Okay, I went into HSL and I just took the blue saturation down to negative 70. And then I'll show you what I did. I just painted it in. So I just went paint. And you can see I painted it in there. And now that I look at it, there's a little bit of blue there. I should probably paint a little bit on that handrail. Uh, I guess this is like some kind of outdoor fireplace thing. Um, or maybe a, uh, I don't know what you call it, the back side of a chimney so you can get the ashes and stuff out. I guess it's that probably. I don't know. Um, there was a super cool fireplace. There's a pup. So there's a, it's an inn. There may be a fireplace there somewhere. Uh, but in the back of it, there's this pub and, and the, the fireplace. Like you can walk in it. It's huge. It's really awesome. If you ever found yourself in this, find yourself in this area, please go. You'll be glad you did. Um, so there we go. I just added a little bit more and I'll say done. And now I'm really done. So I took the blue out of that because, you know, let me turn that layer back off. And if you look at the windows and the windows up above and around that sort of fireplace uh, thing, whatever you call it, a little too blue. So I've taken it down. I only did negative 80, which is actually a lot, but it left a little bit of blue in these upper windows, which I think looks fine and looks normal. Uh, and that's, that's my workflow for that photo. So let me show you the before. Uh, not technically the before, that's the center exposure, but that's a good idea of what you would get if you're shooting a single exposure. Um, you would get something like that. Uh, now that's at negative three, so if you went any brighter, the sky's gonna be even more blown out. If you go any darker, you're gonna lose a lot of visibility into the foreground, and so one of the reasons I love bracketing. And that's the after with all my layers and all my preset fun and stacking stuff. Uh, but there you go, that's what I had or would've had, and there's what I ended up with. So. I like it a lot. It's colorful, it's bold. Now you could come in if you say, I like it, Jim, but the saturation's just too much, which I get, it's not everybody's thing. You could just add one more layer, because there's not a limit that I'm aware of in Aurora. I've had seven, eight, maybe nine layers. Um, I think I heard somebody say they had 17, but I gotta be honest, at, at nine, I'm kinda like, I, I, wanna, I need a beer or something because it's too much work. Um, so I can't imagine going to 17, I would just get another photo and do something easier but I'm kind of lazy, I guess. Um, so uh, you could add another layer and then just take the saturation of the photo, you know, the, the entire layer down, which would adjust the entire photo, if you don't like the saturation. And of course, with HSL, you can come in and, and customize just the colors too. So anyway, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want. That's part of the beauty of Aurora. And for me, part of the beauty of HDR is merging those exposures and coming out with a sky that would have been like that on a single exposure. And you know I'm able to basically recover it because if you recall the blended sky between the three exposures looked really good. It looked uh, very much like the dark um, sky from the darker exposure, which I would have masked in if it had not looked like that. So I didn't have to do that, so I kind of got lucky. And uh, that's it, my friends. I hope it helps. You know, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I got more videos coming real soon. I'm gonna do some more Aurora stuff. I'm gonna do some more Luminar stuff. Maybe some other stuff. I don't know. We'll see what I get into. Um, and that's it. So thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you soon. And I appreciate it. Take care, my friends. See you soon and adios.